a set of driving lights is one of those DIY projects that a lot of four wheel drivers would love to tackle themselves, but they find it a little daunting. The good news is, is that if you arm yourself with the right gear, it really is a pretty simple job. Thanks to the guys from Lightforce, today we're going to be fitting a set of Genesis HID lights to my Faithful 60 series. Lightforce's driving light wiring harness comes complete with everything you need to install your driving lights quickly and easily, as well as ensure that they're totally reliable. The wiring harness is super high quality and heavy duty enough to deal with just about anything the harsh Australian terrain can throw at it. It's designed to supply reliable power to two driving lights that don't exceed a current draw of more than 9 amps each, so keep this in mind when purchasing your driving lights. Because Lightforce's wiring harness is completely universal, it's suitable for vehicles that feature either negative or positive switching systems, and the detailed and easy to follow instructions guide you right through the whole process from start to finish. In this driveway DIY clip, we're using a pair of the amazing Lightforce 50 watt Genesis HID units. The Genesis got the nod for its amazingly natural coloured light, something the halogen just can't come close to. This will make those long stints behind the wheel a whole lot less fatiguing and far more enjoyable. To complete the installation, you'll need a few basic tools, such as a pair of pliers, side cutters, a crimper, a test light or a multimeter, some electrical tape, and a couple of 17mm sockets. Start by disconnecting your battery and then laying out the wiring loom. You'll need to find a spot reasonably close to your battery and make sure that all of your other wires are going to reach where they need to go. Next up, mount your relay base and then insert the relay into the base. Next, we'll need to mount the on off switch. The switch is required by law so that you can still operate your high beam lights without the spotlights coming on. The trickiest part of the job is running the necessary wires into the cabin. But before we can do that, we need to run our wiring loom to a point where it will enter the cabin of the four wheel drive. We'll use a large grommet somewhere near where we want to place our switch. I really think it's worth taking the time to make sure that you've routed your wires that have got to run back into the car as neatly as possible. A great tip is just to follow something that's pre-existing and that way you can cable tie it off as you go, it's nice and neat. Now the tricky part here is to get the wires and the cable that we've got into the actual cabin of the vehicle itself. So what I'm going to do is I've got an old wooden skewer, I've cut down to size, I'm going to tape my wires to it, I'm going to use that to thread it through a grommet that's pre-existing in the firewall and pull it out the other side. When you are taping up the wires to whatever it is you're going to use to thread through the grommet, it's a good idea to make sure that you cover the wires right up like this so that they aren't damaged when pulled through into the cabin. Now we need to terminate the two wires that we've just pulled through into the cabin. Strip a centimetre or so of the insulation from each wire and then measure just how much you're going to need and then trim the wire accordingly. Double check with your wiring loom instructions to ensure that you run the right wire to the right terminal on the switch. Alright, to squeeze the terminals on, you may need to just give it a little bit of a nudge with the screwdriver to pry it away from the body of the switch. Just be gentle while you're doing that. Now you might be wondering what the third prong on the switch is for. That's if you want to illuminate the little LED light that's on the switch itself. And all you need to do is basically run that to an earth, so to the body of the vehicle. In my case, I'm not going to worry about it. I'm not too fussed about having that light on or off. I'll certainly know when the lights are on, that's for sure. So now we need to run the other two insulated wires that are terminated with waterproof ends to the position that the lights themselves are mounted. It is important to take your time with this and route the cables in such a way that they are well away from sharp edges and anything that gets very hot, such as the radiator. Well, as we can see, we've got a fair bit of slack left over on the driver's side. And it's important that we manage this correctly for a couple of reasons. Number one, we need to keep it away from the heat source, which in our case is the radiator up front here. And in things like corrugations and mud, all that sort of gear, we just want to make sure that everything's properly secured and it isn't going to be an issue down the track. So we'll just take a couple of minutes to, to tidy this up, wrap it up, cable tie it, make sure it's fastened to the grill as far away from the radiator as possible, and we'll be ready to go. With the harness in position, it's now time to reconnect your battery so we can move on to the next step. The next step is the fun part, and that's actually mounting your lights. And the guys at Lightforce have got a couple of tricky ways to help you make sure they stay there. The guys from Lightforce understand that driving lights can be a pretty heavy duty investment, and that's why they've come up with this range of anti-theft devices to help you protect that investment. Once you've tightened up your security nut, don't forget to use the all-important nylock nut that also comes in the kit. This will prevent the light from coming loose over nasty corrugations. 
At this point now we need to tap in and find high beam. And this is one of the things that everyone finds so daunting about fitting driving lights, but it really is pretty simple. Now in my case the easiest way to access that is to pull a headlight out, which is just a couple of minutes in the 60. And um, you might find that it's easy to access from behind in your own car. Once we've got everything out, it's simply a case of grabbing our test lamp and then poking onto the wires, pulling high beam and seeing if it illuminates. That way you know you've got the correct wire. With your headlights on low beam, use your test light to find the power wire. This will leave two other wires that don't illuminate the test lamp. Now switch high beam on and try those two wires with the probe. The wire that illuminates the test lamp is your high beam wire. Make a note of the colour of this wire. At this point, you can either strip the high beam wire and solder the brown trigger wire from the light force loom straight onto it, or you can do it the easy way with the supplied Easy Tap terminal. Simply select the right Easy Tap from your kit and squeeze it onto the high beam wire with a pair of pliers. Now you'll need to terminate the trigger wire with the male spade terminal that's also supplied in the wiring harness kit. Once again, strip off a section of the insulation, carefully measure it up and trim away the excess. Then slip it all the way into the terminal and crimp it up nice and tight. Now you can simply slot the spade terminal into the Easy Tap terminal and you've got your high beam trigger sorted. Next up, connect the yellow ring terminal to the positive battery terminal. And if it's possible, mount the fuse holder somewhere neat just like this. Now, connect the black wired ring terminal straight to the negative battery terminal and reconnect it to the battery. To finish the job, Grab a handful of cable ties and make sure that your light force wiring loom is neatly tucked away from any sharp edges or excessive heat sources. Well there you go, that's a couple of awesome HIDs, wired up in just a couple of hours, all that's left to do now is wait for it to get dark and we'll hit the bush and see how they go. In the meantime, if you'd like to find out anything more about the light force range, including the really easy to fit wiring loom, simply head to lightforce.net.au.